Well, what is up everybody? Welcome back to my random series of randomly doing repairs. And um, as you may know, um, uh, two weeks ago I did my video on a, I did my trip vlog for this year, but this time we changed it up a bit. Um, so the house I typically stay at, um, that I film my videos in, we were cleaning it out because it was my grandma's house, she had passed and things happen and yeah, and and a lot of my family members and, you know, my grandpa especially, we were all kind of under engineering, um, doing engineering type stuff and he was very interested in hi-fi equipment and yeah, so was my dad as well and yeah, so I definitely wanted to take back some of the hi-fi equipment from the house because it was, you know, could be pretty good and ended up coming across two different, two TX. Um, First was this um, was the reel-to-reel -reel recorder, which um, which I had found in the garage, and you know we fixed that up last video. Well, fixed. Um, I didn't I didn't do anything with unfreezing the pintroller or capstan mech, but I I was able to transfer over and digitize all the tapes that I had gotten um, for the thing, and yeah, and now we get on just to the subject of today's video, which is this other TAC which is a cassette recorder so yeah that's yeah. so yeah so what we have here if I can remove the um, plate out of the way it's a TX CX350 now um, I attempted to do this video uh, a bit before um, in which I actually in which I got through most of the repair and got it pretty good but unfortunately it had an issue. Unfortunately the belts I used were size too small, so I cut to the chase um, and ordered actual CX350 belts that I found. Um, There's some guy in, on Amazon who was actually selling these things and yeah. Um, so I bought up so I bought up these uh, the actual proper belts for it. They look they seem to be pretty proper. There's three of them. Um, this machine does have three belts and yeah. Um, now, as you can see, I actually kind of already got halfway through this um, job, which I kind of got through the easy part, which is removing the top half, which is just six screws on either side of the deck. Um, you can kind of see it through here, um, you know, and this is, you know, fr facing forward. So you got your two screws over there and one on the back. Um, simple as that, real easy to get into. And yeah, and more importantly, um, yeah. One of the things that I found useful when doing the repair was to remove the mechanism, so I did that. Um, uh, one thing that I don't think anybody or, or many people who are probably just getting into the world of tapes probably know this, but most tape decks like this one have the ability where this front cover can come off easily, so I did just that. Um, the reason why this cover can come off is usually for cleaning. Uh, the um, heads. In fact, I will hand to a close-up of the actual mechanism with it removed. And yeah, you can kind of see little hooks on this little plastic hanger hook thing on the side where this kind of slots into um, pretty nicely. Otherwise, it's a pretty nice looking bit of um, cover. It kind of fits with the design of the rest of the deck. Um, yeah, and as for removing the mech, there's like two screws up at the top and another two at the bottom. You know, and uh, you have to remove, and there's a little PCB behind it. Um, I'll probably show a screenshot here of the um, actual um, repair manual, which kind of goes a little bit in the depth and kind of shows exploded views of things. I've found good success with removing the PCB out the back of it because it's the one that controls the logic for it, and it's like, and if you do it, it kind of does a, it'll make your life a little easier because then you aren't tied down by so many wires because you got all the wires that go to the VU meters and the wires that go to the right, whole right side recording amp and all that and as well as all the stuff for um, running the um, for whether the motor should run or not and maybe a solenoid here and there you know all stuff like that um, I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna talk about all three of the belts and where they are placed um, so yeah let's get right into that all right, so like I said, here is the um, mechanism as it's removed. Um, if you look up here, there's two screws up there, and there should be some at the bottom. 
Um, unfortunately, yes, yeah, these two, and those will and those will remove uh, the mechanism. I don't know. I don't think it's how it was, but this is kind of how I found it from when I did the last video. I think I've got. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. So I think I think I best talk about um, where the belts actually are. So we'll start off with kind of the simplest. Um, for the tape counter, the tape counter is does have its own belt, but it's kind of easy to get to. Um, if you open up the eject and um, yeah, um, behind this um, little this um, piece of brushed aluminum stuff, uh, this it will it has a it has a little um, uh, it has two screws. Um, just simply remove the two screws and you're in. Uh, you can get to uh, the, you can get to the, to the actual uh, thing itself. I think we're gonna start off with that because it's kind of the easiest thing to do, and then we can just straight up leave it alone. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna take my screwdriver and I'm just gonna get on with that. All right, so here we are at the mechanism. Unfortunately, I forgot to um, get the um, camera in sh in frame properly. Um, so, yeah, like I said, um, or like I was about to say, um, the easiest thing to do is the, um, the kind of easiest one to do that is unrelated to the other set of them, um, is the, um, tape counter belt. Um, the tape counter belt is as simple as just removing this piece, which has two screws up here. In fact, you could kind of see the standoffs right there, those two things. Um, yeah biggest thing with this just make sure you try and get it to be as to be like right on where it came off because you know you want it to be you want it to be good when it goes back on because if, if you don't you just won't get your eject button your eject door won't it won't close properly which is not very good obviously um, so yeah so make sure when you put this thing back together you know just do stuff like that um, so yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that back on since I don't think I'm gonna be doing stuff back here, but yeah. All right, now one trick that I could give that'll make it much easier to put the door thing in. Unfortunately, it's very hard to get this on camera, um, but there is a little two plastic tabs. In fact, you can see the left side one right here. You're gonna wanna, um, it's actually got a little slot in it. Um, Basically, you're going to want to wedge the this whole back plane area into the said wedge, um, and then screw it in. You should be able to get your door to close and open flawlessly. If you don't, it'll just be it'll become you know you won't be able to close the door. You won't be able to open the door, and it'll be absolute hell, and the machine probably won't work. So, but with that being said, um, that kind of concludes um, fixing the belt. Everything's all nice and tight on there, and. You know, if I try and move the um, tape counter, it actually just so happens to inadvertently move the um, the right um, spindle, which is what it should be doing because we mounted it to that. And um, yeah, and now for a um, bit of a weird thing that we're going to do, but is kind of very, 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 very standard um, with with tape decks, especially the TX. Um, so. Um, this is kind of the real um, meat and potatoes of the whole um, tape repair journey, as I call it, or as anyone would probably call it at this point. Um, so there's the two belts back here, um, and yeah, the two belts back here are a um, bit hard to, well, you actually have to do the hard one before you knock out the easy one. Um, this. This um, small one mil belt that I've got here was is probably the easiest to work with because you've got because, it's, because if you look at the motor, unfortunately, I'm, it's not the most evenly lit. But if you look at the motor, there's two slots for belts. Um, there's your one belt here, which is your this one mil belt um, here, and um, you know that's got your that goes to that. That's really easy to get to. In fact, I might even just skip over it and just explain it um, and you've got your belt that goes from the flywheel to the um, to the front of the mech um, 
we're, you're gonna have to tackle this first, and I say it's and it's kind of the hardest to deal with because um, there's many approaches you could take to it. Um, and yeah, now I already have belts on here, and they're pretty good belts, but unfortunately they're incorrect size belts. So, um, so basically, um, now. Originally, when I had this machine, when I started out with this thing, um, this belt was actually the worst for wear because it had turned to a goo. And I'm gonna show some B-roll footage of me of the original video, kind of the only thing that kind of exists of that at this point. Um, yeah, it's the, the flywheel belt is kind of the worst and usually the first to go. So yeah, um, in fact, you can kind of see where the glue kind of got left over. Now, in my case, I am going to be messing with um, a bit of stuff that's a bit sensitive um, to the tape deck and its operation. Um, there's two screws on the side of the um, mech, which are um, right here, almost there. Kind of, you can see one of them. There's another one underneath the little fold there. Um, and yeah, and out the back, um, if I could, if I could get it, if I could get the camera to just point a bit to the back, um, there's a little nub, that this little plastic nub. Um, that's supposed to be to tension the um, axle that holds the flywheel on. Um, you're gonna kind of want to remember the um, position that it was kind of in before you started on the job, or maybe just adjust it when you get audio out on it and try and make it sound correct because as it is um these um flywheel things they are you know this contains some grease on it and um yeah in fact um the more astute of you would probably not even recommend this way um just because of the amount of weird stuff that goes on in it um yeah, the most notable issue is that, uh, yeah, it's, you will be, I ended up having to, I ended up having to use the strategy where I just snake it through the, this, and, um, remove these two screws to make it easier to fold it out a bit. Um, and yeah, we'll just do that quickly. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is kind of what I mean by um, incorrectly sized. If you look at this, this was this was the belt that I had on it originally, and this is the belt that it's getting replaced with. This belt was only big enough to really just to really only fit the um, just the flywheel itself. There we go. Now, this was actually um, much easier than when I had first done it. Now, obviously, it's because I've kind of already done this job, but with less compliant belts and less compliant stuff, you know, it's, it's not the worst part. And yeah, now what I'm going to do, just because, just to remind myself that I'm completely done with this part of the job, which is pretty good. I'm just going to plug this. I'm just going to click this back in. Now, another recommendation I would make after doing this is to lubricate the area because there is supposed to be grease behind there, and that is a grease pin. Also, um, when you get it powered up, don't completely put it in. Maybe t plug some headphones in and try and listen to um, a tape with it, and uh, especially a tape with music you know about because so then you could get it where if everything sounds right, you can actually hear that everything sounds right. And yeah, because if you, because the little screw on the back uh, is a, a good adjustment for um, finding out if you're, you know, you could get it, use it to, it can adjust your speed. It can slow you down a bit and it's not for... All right, so um, one thing that I kind of wanted to, mention as you take it as you put it back together always check for any cables that made it in front of the mechanism while you were putting it back together i kind of got reminded of that when i was um 
um, putting together the um, thing. I was trying to screw in the PCB, but it just wouldn't go because, um, yeah, there were two wires one that were holding the two blue wires that do the um, that run the VU meter. Um, in this case, the one for the left VU meter. Uh, yeah, it got um, it got um, yeah it got in front of the um, reset button for the tape counter and um, yeah it it became kind of hard to be like I was like how is it why is this not why ain't this doing its thing and yeah I found out why real quick yeah and yeah. Now one thing that's kind of hard to um, both get on camera and get on with and do when, when you're trying to repair this thing is um, getting the one little, there's like one little hook that you have to re-hook in. Um, I believe it's for the record stop feature. It goes through this plastic bit here. Um, there's a little plastic bit with the little switch on the big PCB. Um, you're gonna want to um, try and connect it up. Um, and get it with its linkage. Unfortunately, I can't really, it's not easy to show on camera, but it's kind of deep in the mech. Um, I kind of need to find out how to point the cam. If I can, if I can zoom in on it, but I'm not trying right now. Um, if I can try, yeah. If I can try, yeah, it's like, it's very hard to just directly get it on camera, but I think I might be able you guys might be able to see a little bit of it. Um, it's kind of to the left of the motor. You, you kind of know it when you know it. It's underneath the motor, actually. And yeah, it's kind of hard to get it in accurately. Um, yeah, and it's very hard to do it when there's a camera shoved up in your face. So, you know, that's, that's one pro tip you might not need, but very important. All right, so here we are. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, now everything, the mech is back in. Um, so what I would now recommend is that you go in and get your hands on studio headphones or something with a quarter inch jack. Um, and yeah, a very quaint reminder that um, if you go back towards where the power switch is, there is um, live voltage there. So please avoid um, touching near the, near the left side of the motor because that's there's probably live voltage there. Now I'm gonna plug in headphones and try and plug in a and put in a tape. Also make sure that if we press play, the mechanism runs perfect, which looks perfect. Um, yeah, I got it to roughly the right speed. There's a bit of a, it has a slight wow and flutter every so often. It's not like it's a constant one. It's kind of like a, oh, I'm responding to things and I've got to do stuff. I might have to go in and lubricate it properly later, um, cause yeah, it's definitely, but yeah, otherwise it sounds pretty good. Um, you know, it is a TAC, it does have that, um, TAC sound. I'm not surprised by that, by any means. Um, yeah, the only other problem really that I have with it is that the, um, the, um, record knob, the right record knob, I tried to pull that off trying to out of curiosity trying to pull it out and it just and I kind of and I forgot that it was glued in there so I'm probably gonna have to get the glue out and glue it in properly and uh, yeah but otherwise yeah this was a pretty good one uh, if you like it yourself please like and subscribe not sure if I'm gonna be doing any more um, uh, cassette deck repairs or weird cassette video type things I mostly do gaming type content mostly gaming type content um, and um, yeah but anyways, um, that's it for today. If you like yourself, please like and subscribe, and bye.